Hello friends, welcome to today's video. As you could tell from the title, today I decided to do something that I have not done before, which is basically taking a YouTuber that I watch and I like and eating like them for a day, or in this case, closer to a week because it's sort of a meal prep video. Uh, you can tell from the title that the person that I'm going to be eating like is Amanda Seipert. She is probably my favorite uh, Weight Watchers content maker on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I haven't ever had any contact with her, so if you happen to be watching this video, Amanda, I really appreciate your content. Um, what I quite like is that she does meal prep, which I think is interesting. Um, I like the kinds of food that she does. I do find on um, watching people on YouTube who do sort of Weight Watchers WW content that there can be a tendency to like maybe not have that many vegetables and use more processed type foods. And I do find that Amanda tends towards more whole foods and I find her recipes to be interesting and varied. So I enjoy watching it to get ideas. Um, but specifically this video that came up uh, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, uh, I watched it and thought, all of that looks delicious and I even have some of the ingredients on hand already. And that is what gave me the idea to recreate and uh, see what it's like. And I, I'm doing this sort of intro after I already did the whole thing. So what we're gonna do is go through the meal prep that I did, uh, a few differences here because being in Canada, I can't quite always access the same stuff. And then I'll be doing a little bit of a taste test and review as well. Uh, a couple things I want to mention, the first being at one point you're going to see me holding some where I have like a huge red mark on my wrist. For some reason my watch started to irritate my wrist. Uh, it's getting better now, I've just got a band-aid on it, but in case you're wondering it was just a little bit of like skin irritation. And I'm not going to give you specific recipes or amounts. What I am going to do is link to Amanda's meal prep video down below where she makes it incredibly easy to follow along with because if this looks interesting for you, I want you to go and watch her content because she was the one who put the work into um, finding and developing and these recipes and really doing a great job of laying out her meal prep. I think that's everything I wanna say, so let's get into the meal prep portion. Here are my breakfast sliders ready to go into the oven. Of course, again, not all the same ingredients available here. Uh, there aren't Hawaiian rolls. I don't think sweet rolls are a thing in Canada. I've never seen them anywhere that I go, not that I've been looking, but I just don't think they're a thing here. So these are non-sweet regular um, buns. They are from like the, they're from the Great Canadian Superstore, but basically Loblaws Independent, all of those. They're just dinner rolls um, baked in store, and these end up being three points per roll. For the sausage component, I also ended up going vegetarian, but I got the Gardein breakfast sausage, and I got it in the maple flavor um, because I thought that would maybe add some of the sweetness that the rolls didn't have. Uh, and basically, I made five of these sliders because there were five of these in the package. I then scrambled four whole eggs and put that on there. Uh, and then for cheese, I got these Velveeta slices. They are one point each. Oh, and I didn't mention, but those Gardein veggie patties, uh, veggie sausage, were two points each. So these are six point uh, sliders. And I'm going to do a little brush of butter and some spices like Amanda did. Um, but I think that will still keep them at six points. And then they go in the oven. I finished baking the Funfetti protein muffins. Uh, I did make a few changes for mine out of necessity. So I did happen to have the same uh, protein that uh, Amanda was using. So I was able to use that. Uh, here in Canada, we don't have the same selection of different products. So this is the only protein pancake mix I could find. Uh, this one is President's Choice Blue Menu. So I did use that. And I also didn't have, or I didn't buy, I should have bought the larger uh, sort of sprinkles. And I will show you why. Well, another thing is I realized that I didn't have a muffin pan. I totally thought I did. It was one of those like breakup kind of things that the muffin pan was not mine. Uh, so I decided to sort of bake it into like a loaf pan to make a cake instead and then I'll divide it into 12. But the reason I haven't showed you the finished product yet, which is over here, is uh, yeah, when these go into the batter and I mixed it, all of the color came off of them and made my batter weirdly 
grayish bluish green. So I would not suggest using the ones that I used. I mean, it'll taste the same. And I think what I'll do at the end when it comes out is put a little sprinkling on top just to make it look a little prettier. So with the muffins, she put them in for uh, 15 minutes. I'm going to start at 15 minutes, but I think this is going to take longer because it is like a loaf. Uh, so basically, I'll just keep testing it every few minutes until uh, a toothpick comes out dry. But I wish I hadn't messed up the lovely sort of color that it had before I mixed in the sprinkles. This is my funfetti loaf cake out of the oven. And honestly, there's not going to be any kind of like beauty shot that makes this look good. I will say that the underside actually looks more attractive. It's like um, browned a little bit and not as like weird bluey gray as the top. But again, that's because of the sprinkles that I used. Uh, I did trim the ends a little bit because um, there was a little bit of the foil stuck there. So you can see it's got like a pretty dense bready texture. Um, I'm going to slice this into 12 portions and then I will have one as a snack later. I have my potatoes and my onions cut up for the sort of turkey sausage potato bake. Now, I assume when she is prepping, she's doing it for her and her husband. So I'm doing sort of half the amount. And again, not the same products here in Canada. What I was able to get was this uh, turkey kielbasa. Uh, and basically, I'm going to chop up all of this and put it in. This is the turkey sausage bake out of the oven. And sorry, I'm just starting to section it off into four servings. And then I realized I should probably take a picture of it. Um, I did top it with a little bit of cheese, basically a serving and a half of cheese at the end. And I know that's a weird way of saying that. It was basically 45 grams of this cheese. It's the President's Choice smoke flavored cheddar. I thought that would have sort of the boldest flavor for the number of points. So these are four significant servings uh, and they are nine points each. So it's going to be a pretty hearty lunch. Here is my breakfast slider. I feel like I should say as part of a balanced breakfast. Does anybody else remember as a kid watching cartoons and it'd be like a bowl of sugar cereal and then all kinds of healthy stuff around it so they could pretend like it was healthy? But this looks so good and I'm so happy with how it turned out. It's like crispy on the outside and on the bottom and then all super melty. So this is my six point breakfast slider sandwich. I'm having it with a frothed milk coffee, 2% uh, milk, uh, about a quarter cup of it frothed up just with coffee poured in and two equal sweeteners. That is one point. Um, this is actually my second one of the day. So it's three points for two of them. And uh, yeah, and my breakfast sandwich. So I am going to have this and enjoy it. And I'll tell you what it's like after. I just finished the breakfast slider and that was so good. Like so much better than I even expected it would be. First of all, the bottom and the top both got so crispy. It almost tasted like fried in a way, but I know it wasn't. Um, you know, I did put a little bit of margarine on top, but nothing on the bottom. Um, so, so nice and crisp on the outside. And then I think between the egg and that Velveeta cheese, it was so creamy and felt so... Um, <laughs> You like how you can see the protein in the background? It just felt really rich and decadent. Um, I really liked the little sausage patty in there. Uh, I don't know how I'd feel about it if the roll was sweet. Um, I'm sure it would be really good too, but I did like having that little touch of maple in the sausage that made it like sweet. But that was like, I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be really small. It's not gonna be that filling, but it was so tasty and it was so rich that it completely filled me up. So that is like a 10 out of 10. Now what I'm curious about is how exactly do I store these? I'm gonna wrap each one individually in foil, but do I keep them in the fridge? Do I keep them in the freezer? Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I guess maybe I'll try it like both ways. And then I think probably what I'll do is reheat them in the foil in the oven so that maybe they retain some of that crispness for future days. But those are delicious and I cannot wait to have my breakfast tomorrow. Here is my lunch, the turkey potato bake. It smells so good. Uh, and I think it seems like it's gonna be a really nice hearty kind of meal. Uh, I don't eat potatoes that often, even though I love them. They always just seem too high point. But uh, yeah, this I think is gonna be really good. 
I know Amanda would usually have this with uh, some steamed broccoli on the side because I know in her meal prep she uses a little like double-sided container and puts some frozen broccoli in one side. I'm being a little bit lazy and not having that. Maybe I'll have some with my dinner. Uh, okay, so I will let you know how it is. The turkey sausage potato bake was really good. Uh, not quite as mind-blowing as the breakfast slider, but still really tasty, really hearty, just a really good, it's becoming cool outside again kind of dish. Uh, I think next time I have it, I will have some veggies on the side just to sort of like round the meal out a little bit. Um, I was really impressed with how creamy it sort of became, considering that there was only the smallest bit of cheese on there. But between the potatoes and the uh, onions cooking, it really did get a nice creamy texture to it. And again, just really hearty and really delicious. And I mentioned I don't have potatoes that much. For some reason in my mind, I always think they're going to be more points than they are. Uh, and especially with this cut up into little pieces, you really feel like you're getting a lot of potatoes. So super happy with that. And again, looking forward to having it over the next few days. For dinner, because my meals so far today have all been pretty points heavy, I'm going to be having some of my uh, zero point chili. I've actually tracked it at one point, um, just because there is tomato paste in there and I use a bit of oil to saute the veggies. Uh, I have Greek 0% plain yogurt on here, kind of to act like sour cream, and some sriracha to spice it up. Then on the side, I have one of these rolls. It actually tracked for two points when I logged it. I think if you have one of these, like I did for breakfast, it's three points, but two of them are five points, so that worked out well. And then I have two teaspoons of this basil light for one point. I'm going to have my snack of the, what for me is like protein loaf. <laughs> uh, and you can see, while it does have some air bubbles in there, like bread, it's really dense, but I'm gonna not judge it so much on that because it was supposed to be cooked into muffins, not into a loaf, and that may have played a part in the texture. And again, I know it's this weird, unappealing color, um, but I'm not gonna judge it on that either because that was my poor choice of sprinkles. And I'm also just having this with a uh, decaf oat milk latte. I want to give you my thoughts on the Funfetti protein loaf. There were so many things there that was different from the way that Amanda made it. Specifically, I think the muffins versus loaf was part of it. Um, so I do think that some of the density issues that I had wouldn't have happened if they were cooked as muffins. Uh, but it was interesting. I was expecting it to be super sweet because the protein powder seems to be super sweet or tends to be. Um, and then, you know, there was the banana and there were the sprinkles in there, but it actually just tasted like a pretty dense, lightly sweet banana loaf. I found the prevailing flavor that came through was the banana and it was quite nice. I wasn't, I felt like going into it, I was like, oh, it's going to maybe not be my thing, uh, but I kept finding myself going back to it over and over. And it did not have, I do find sometimes with protein powders, they can be like a bitter aftertaste. And I did not find that to be an issue at all with this loaf. So I would definitely um, do it again. I would use different sprinkles. I would bake them as muffins, but this also makes me excited to try other recipes and muffins and items that have protein powder as one of the ingredients in something that's baked because I hadn't really done that before and I quite enjoyed it. I will also mention in my wrap up because again, it's been a number of days since I did the prep and I've been eating these for a while. I ended up just wrapping up the breakfast sandwiches in foil and keeping them in the refrigerator. Uh, and what I did was just turned on an oven to like 350 degrees and popped them in for like 15 or 20 minutes. And they seem to have no issue reheating and still retain their crispiness. I wouldn't say it's like quite, I would say like if the first day I was having them was like a 10 out of 10, then maybe reheating them brings them to a 9.5 out of 10. They're still really good and I was looking forward to them every day. So overall, I would 100% make those breakfast sandwiches again. They were amazing and delicious. I would make the sausage um, potato bake again. I do think it's good to have it with like a vegetable side to just add a little bit more bulk and greenery to it. Uh, but the idea on how it was made also gives me ideas for like, oh, you know, the turkey with like a sweet potato bake could be really good with like some different spices on there. So I think it's one of those recipes you can take and really modify it to what you want. Uh, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, I really like the uh, Funfetti protein loaf as well. 
The whole day ended up being a 24 point day. And what I really liked most about this is I have this tendency to really gravitate towards lower point meals and then fill in a lot of snacks. And what this um, meal prep did was really have hearty meals. And it was different for me, but I really liked sort of having these meals that really filled me up and gave me that comfort food feeling that held me on to the next meal, both uh, physically, you know, not feeling hungry, but also I want to say emotionally because it felt like I was really satisfying myself at each meal. So it didn't feel like I was looking for other things to eat to get sort of that like satisfaction feeling from it. So that is everything I have to say. Um, I'm definitely going to continue watching Amanda's videos, but also go through her backlog of meal preps and um, what I eat in a day videos, because I think there's some really great ideas there. And knowing how wonderful all of these recipes were, I'm so looking forward to trying more. I will put a link to her channel down below. If there are different channels or people who do what I eat in a day or recipe videos and you want me to try out any of them, please let me know. I really enjoy doing this and I look forward to seeing all of you in my next video. Bye!